So you thought day 18 was tough? Well, this one is almost like the amazing day 20 from last year. Welcome Haskellings, go and pour yourselves a drink. This is a long one. We start by using InteractG to split the input into groups. We can write a parser for each scanner, which has a fairly simple format. Now, I just happen to have watched the recent computer file video about the iterative closest point algorithm, but we only need to consider 90 degree rotations, so I don't think that's applicable here. Anyway, we have now a parser for the first line of a section and one for the points. DoParse will take in the lines, split out the first, then use parse to get the scanner number and parse list for the points. Note that this is using the either monad, but we use let with parse list because it already ignores errors. We have to handle negative integers again, so let's just put integer prime into our advent of code module and use that instead. Let's use the writes function then to ignore any errors in reading the input. But to make sure we're good, let's check the length of that list and compare it against the input. Great, so we now need to consider all the possible orientations. We're told that there should be 24 in total, so one way to represent that is to specify which face is in the positive x direction, and then there are four possible unique rotations in the x direction. I don't often use new types, but I thought we could spice things up a bit today. An alternative would be to use a data type with explicit inhabitant names like this. So the spin new type will represent the initial x rotation and we can then have an orientation data type containing a face and a spin. We need to write transform functions that will orient a point in a consistent way. Face 0 will just be the identity transform. Face 1 can be the 180 degree rotation so x becomes negative x and one of the other dimensions must also be negated to ensure we're not including a reflection. If you remember matrices from high school, it's like making sure the determinant remains positive. The next face will move y to the x dimension, and by keeping the order of the dimensions, we again avoid reflections. Then it's minus y's turn, followed by z, and finally, minus z. Rotating around the x-axis is also not difficult. We just need to swap the y and z dimensions and negate one of them. We keep doing the same until we get back to the original coordinates. This also helps us to verify that we haven't made a mistake along the way. Now we can write the O function, which will do a complete transformation from a value of our orientation type. We're going to need a list of all the possible orientations, which is done easily with a list comprehension, and then we'll be ready to start with F. Let's start by making a map from scanner ID to point list. It can be a strict int map because the indices are ints. The top level of our algorithm is going to be a recursive function that will take our map and the list of scanners and try to match them with the other scanners to fill out a resulting set of points. We'll start with scanner 0 and try to match it against the others. Any matching scanners will get their points added to the result set and we should also keep track of the transform function for each scanner for future iterations. So for the current scanner, the points will be looked up in the T's map and its transform will be looked up in the trans map. So when we call G, we're going to pass it the T's map, the list of scanner IDs, and the initial trans map, which will just contain a link 
from scanner 0 to the identity function. Let's use a set for the points, which will start off with the points from scanner 0. So we're going to be using set.union to add in the extra points found. But let's move on to doing the actual point comparisons. We're going to need to map over the orientations, but also over the scanners we haven't yet pinned down. So we are going to need to keep track of these unknowns as well. And in fact, the list of scanners we are going through can be the list of known ones. So that will start off with just scanner zero. So our map of maps will need to do a comparison over the points. We subtract each point from each of the unknown scanner's points after transforming them to get a list of the translations between each pair. We can use the histo function again to find the most popular of these and if they have at least 12 the same, then it's a match and we can use list to maybe to get the best match as a maybe point offset. We can then use map maybe and concat map when calling compare list to get all the matches in one list. The result of compare list is going to need to incorporate the transform function and scanner ID, where the transform function is ends transform function plus the offset translation plus the reorientation. Let's make it return a tuple of the scanner ID, the transformed points, and a map from ID to transform, so we can add these in more easily. We can then use unzip3 to take the list of tuples and make it into a tuple of lists. And so the new unknowns will be the unknowns less the new knowns. We can use the unions function to combine all the transformation maps together. And similarly for the point sets. And the knowns left to try will have m's appended. OK, so we have a typo there and an error because of the tr function in the advent of code module which we can simply hide. The histo function is not yet in the advent of code module, so let's actually fix that now by removing it from the other solutions and adding it after the count function. And we're going to have to specify the type there as well. Next up, we need to use a lambda for this map of maps and swap the parameters around to compare list. And now that it's all working, we just need to get the size of the resulting set. Part 2 is going to need us to return the transformation functions from G instead of the points. We can then get the coordinates for all the scanners by mapping through them and transforming their origin into scanner zero's coordinate system. Note that our num instance for three tuples allows us to use 0 instead of 000, zero, zero here. We forgot the parentheses here, but actually let's convert this to a point-free notation anyway. Similar to yesterday, we get the list of all the scanner pairs with a recursive function. Then we can get the Manhattan distance between them all using uncurry to apply a function of two parameters to the pair. Except our Manhattan function only takes one parameter, so let's do the subtraction in a lambda. But our Manhattan function also only works for two tuples, so let's quickly write a three-dimensional version. That's now working, and we have a result. So, until next time, happy huskling! <laughs>